Ricky Purcell. Ricky. Ricky! Ricky was shot in San Francisco, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I'm going to bring you this story, but let me just preface this by saying that American cities are falling. They have now become war zones, which is basically the theme of this show. These places have become war zones, and it's unfortunate. Now, the only reason that they're being held accountable, because I've been calling London Breed's name, and I've been pushing for people to push uh, San Francisco and these western cities, and we're going to get into the fact that they even given California illegal migrants uh, up to $150,000 to be able to buy a home. We're going to get to that. But they basically ceded the city over to the criminals. And first, you're going to see Oakland fall, and then it's going to have a... I don't want to say that. It's going to start replicating over into other cities in the West before it starts to sweep back over into the rest of the United States. Because usually, as California goes, that's how the rest of the United States goes. You don't believe me? Okay. Well, how about we go ahead and just reference what the EPA laws are, and then that determines what cars get sold in the United States of America, because why? California has a huge population. They're the ones that are the most concerned about climate change. They're the biggest tree huggers. And so what you have is a replication of what the laws are in California starting to impact who's selling cars where and what type of cars they can sell, which is where Tesla was born, right? And then it's now starting to affect other automakers as far as whether or not they're able to compete inside of the United States of America. Similarly to Dodge. Dodge, Stellantis, Chrysler, whatever you want to call them, they are now having a problem because they can no longer afford to sell V8 vehicles. And now they're starting to introduce the electric charger, which most people don't want. It's just the truth. Because they don't want to replace their big vehicles and they want a choice of whether or not they want electric vehicles versus having to be forced into it. And so it's similar to what happens as far as crime, laws, all of that stuff starts to replicate. And usually California's, it seems like, populate faster than everybody else. And so what they do is they wind up selling their home. They take their liberal views and their liberal policies and they take to the Austin. They go to Houston. They go to Florida. They go to New York. They go to Atlanta. They go to Miami. They go to all of these different places and they start to transform those places into the place that they came from, even though they're running from it because it didn't serve them. Check it out. All right, welcome back in here to Live Now from Fox. I'm Andy Mack. Thank you so much for joining us. A live look there in Washington, D.C. here on this Sunday, covering all of the top headlines, both here and abroad. Another live look on this Labor Day weekend. We entered the month of September. Uh, just about uh, 2.30 on the East Coast, following all the latest headlines here or there as we near that were killed in the act of San Francisco. A tragic, near tragic event just a weekend before the NFL season kicks off as 49ers wide receiver Ricky Pearsall is in serious but stable condition after an attempted robbery shooting his mother posting on Facebook that the bullet missed his vital organs. Some good news there uh, out of this story. And I want to give you more information about it here on Live Now from Fox, of course, uh, said he is in good spirits after the bullet. Uh, hit his chest, exited out the back in the shooting road, wrote on Facebook as Pearsall was shot Saturday afternoon during an attempted... Is that mama? Is that mama or his girlfriend? Robbery, the 17-year-old suspect in police custody. The suspect reportedly was trying to take Pearsall's Rolex watch at gunpoint on a Facebook. She said, first and far... Most, I want to thank God for protecting my baby boy. Uh, he is extremely lucky. God shielded him. He was shot in the chest and it exited out the back. Thanks be to God. These it new moms, his they vital look different, organs. don't they? So we're following the These new moms don't look like the old moms. <laughs> Moms of yesteryear was a little different than the new moms. Latest here on this, and our Fox 2 team was on the ground yesterday covering it all. This uh, reporter, Zach Sauce, saying the video of the 49ers draft pick, Ricky Pearsall, entering his first year in the NFL, walking to the ambulance after police say he was shot near Union Square. This is courtesy of a eyewitness on the ground. Uh, more reporting is the San Francisco police say the draft pick, Ricky Pearsall was shot during an attempted robbery at 3.37 p.m. 
is being treated there at San Francisco General, where media briefed uh, to be scheduled. And also we're hearing a statement from the San Francisco 49ers uh, on this shooting yesterday afternoon saying he, quote, sustained a bullet wound to his chest in serious but stable condition. We ask that you please respect the privacy at this time. Our thoughts and prayers are with Ricky and the entire Pearsall family. For more on this, let's go out to our Fox 2 team as they're covering this incident from yesterday. Shooting happened around 3.30 this afternoon near Geary and Hyde, not far from Union Square. Officers tell us Pearsall was walking outside when he was confronted by a 17-year-old armed with a gun. A struggle ensued, shots were fired, and soon both Pearsall and the suspected gunman were taken to the hospital. KTV Zach Sauce live outside SF General tonight with the latest on Pearsall's condition. Zach. And as you mentioned at this hour, Ricky Pearsall still being treated here at San Francisco General. Earlier, the mayor, the San Francisco DA, the police chief, all addressing the media this after Pearsall was first almost robbed and then shot right by Union Square in the middle of a holiday weekend. A warning, the video you're about to see is graphic. You know, the, the how come they never address crime? or they never started to really start to get tough on crime until it became so visible. And it happened on a busy holiday weekend in the middle of San Francisco. People was arguing with me over the internet uh, yesterday about, man, San Francisco got the best weather. That's why people move there. No, it don't. No, it don't. Especially in the winter time. It's Hawaii, Miami, and San Diego in that order. Trust me. I was looking around, I was searching, I was researching, I was talking to my friends in all of the different locations. And I was sitting there in the wintertime during the vid, during the pandemic. I said, where is Anton going to go? I can go to Hawaii, right? But that's a little too far because I can't just make that quick flight back and forth. I'm not going to be able to bring a car with me. And I'm going to be living here for, for at least three to four months. I can go to San Diego, but California was largely closed. But Miami had better weather and Miami was open. I said, Miami it is. We went to Miami and it was 80 degrees on New Year's Eve. They had fireworks. Christmas was dope. Everything was good. We were swimming in the pool. All of my friends back home were suffering. I said, y'all should be here. Y'all should be here. Neither here nor there. The point that I'm making, though, is going back to this whole situation is they didn't want to address anything. And you're going to see this press conference and all of the different thoughts and stuff. For some reason, it wasn't no concern or anything like that. Businesses has been leaving. Uh, London Breed has been spending more of her time championing in the alphabet community. And of course, of course, city that's ran by people that are of color, right? It's always cities where people was ran of color, but they never wanted, wanted to address any of the uh, issues that basically drove these cities into the ground in the first place. But... It had to happen to somebody of prominence in order for them to start addressing it. Five shot ahead. Cell phone video capturing a bloodied Ricky Pearsall moments after San Francisco police say the 49ers player was shot in the chest during an attempted robbery near Union Square. A man who asked not to appear on camera standing nearby. Within a second, the police were, they came in and then the guy that got shot, he crossed on the other side. He was shot on the left hand side. The 23 year old receiver who was drafted in the first round by the 49ers this year was rushed to Zuckerberg San Francisco General. Thankfully, Mr. Pearsall is in stable condition. Police say Pearsall was in front of 777 Geary Street near Grant Avenue when a 17 year old suspect from Tracy approached him just after three in the afternoon. A struggle between Mr. Pearsall and the suspect ensued. Gunfire from the suspect's gun stru struck both Mr. Mr. Pearsall and the subject. The suspect was also taken to the hospital and is now in police custody. This kind of violence is simply unacceptable in our city and we will do everything in our power to work with District Attorney Brooke Jenkins to ensure that justice is served in this matter. There will be accountability for those who commit these types of acts in San Francisco. Back at the site of the shooting, police spending hours collecting evidence. Those who witnessed the shooting shaken. Very scared. Yeah, it's scary. 
anything can happen in the blink of an eye. Chief Bill Scott crediting his officers' quick response with the department's decision to beef up police presence in the area over the last few years, a presence police plan to add to. Usually when things like this happen, people get very get, get anxiety, and we want to make sure that the public knows that we're there for them. So we will increase that deployment. And we were going to do that during the holiday season anyway. And again, one person in custody right now, a 17-year-old, because they're a juvenile, their name being withheld. The DA says she plans to make a decision on charges by sometime early next week. Again, Pearsall right now in serious but stable condition. Say that this All right, thank you so much for that update. As, uh, we're following the latest here on Live Now from Fox. The 49ers, they do host the New York Jets on Monday night football in week one of quick. that season. I want to yeah. go to district attorney. And my office takes over that there will be accountability for those who commit these types of acts in San Francisco. We are not a city that will be tolerant of these of this type of conduct. Yeah. And so I look forward to continuing to work with the yeah. police department. I thank them for their swift action and I will continue to work to support the mayor in our efforts together to collectively make San Francisco as safe as it should be. This is a setback, but we will continue to push forward to make sure that we minimize these types of events in our city. How many of y'all are tired of speeches? Me personally, I'm exhausted. I don't care about your speeches. I only want to see the results. We will not be the type of city that will let this go unpunished. These type of crimes, cap. 17 years old, we could probably we probably know what the suspect looked like. We ain't gonna get into that because they haven't released it. But you know, for some reason, I think I'll put my money on. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We'll get there. But I'm tired of speeches. I, I want to see, like, it's similar to what happens with Kamala Harris when she jumps on the microphone and she just says a bunch of general stuff. Yeah, we're gonna be here for the middle class, we're gonna get tougher on crime. What does that mean? What exactly does that mean? Are we changing laws? Are we hiring more police officers? Are we working harder with the community? Are we less tolerant by being more tolerant and allowing people to sell up to $950 and stuff? Are we gonna remove all of the, the, the vagrants and the drug use and crack down? What does that mean? Like, what exactly, what real steps, tangible steps are we taking to then fix the situation and remove these people off the street in the first place. Let me go over to uh, the, the, the police chief, I believe. Any questions? I'll start right here. Is there any Look at London Bree. That Ricky was targeted because of who he is? We need to stop electing these women based off of their looks. All right? Football player. No, there is no indication that he was targeted because he's a football player. At this point, we believe that this was an attempted robbery, and uh, we're pretty confident about that. Do you know what they were trying to say? You know what's up with it, JG. Well, we're not going to release that at, at this time. We Information is still flowing in. You know, we're interviewing the officers. We have to interview Mr. Pearsall. Of course, he's receiving medical care right now. So when we put information out, we want to make sure it's 100% accurate. Although we have a good idea, uh, we're not ready to release that at this time. He was described as stable. Can, can you shed any more light on that? Is, is this a life threatening situation? Well, that's Green all Super I can Chat, say at this point because of HIPAA uh, rules. He is stable, and that's what um, we've been advised by the medical team. That, and that's all we can put out at this point. Yeah. Maybe one one day we'll see this same district attorney run for president of the United States of America. Ooh, my bad. I didn't mean to say that out loud. My bad. Let's go. You and Zach. Yes, we believe it was only one gun, and that gun has been recovered. And it was the suspect? It was the I want to hear from London Bree real quick before we go over to the next story, because we ain't got time to be playing no games. They're asking questions that we already know the answers to. I want to hear from the mayor, the mayor of San Francisco. Mayor, the DA mentioned that this is a setback. Can you comment on the idea about San Francisco and time and the new narrative, et cetera, and how Yeah, I would just say that it is very rare for something like this to happen in Union Square. And also... But it's not rare for it to happen in San Francisco, only in Union Square. As what was mentioned earlier, 
we have had an increase in officer deployment, specifically covering the Union Square area for the past couple of years. And so, unfortunately, um, this incident, uh, we, are, we are glad that uh, the victim will be okay. Um, but this incident does set us back from all the hard work that we've done in order to make significant changes in public safety in San Francisco. Uh, we still have the lowest violent crime rate of any major city. Uh, we are on track to have record low numbers of gun. Let me back that up for one second. Violent, uh, we still have the lowest violent crime rate of any major city. Uh, we are on track to have record low numbers of gun violence in particular in this. So remember, when they say that we have the lowest violent crime rate of any major city, that's per capita. So that is according to how many people live in a city, and that is how likely you are to lose your life. When they say violent crime, they mean like murder, okay? So it don't mean that you're not going to get mugged. It doesn't mean that you're not going, your car not going to get broken into. It don't mean that it's not an outbreak of, of drug use. It doesn't mean that the streets is be not being ran over by street takeovers. It does not mean that businesses are running away. It don't mean that taxes ain't high. Don't mean that it ain't a lot of police officers to even report on it in the first place. It just means that you're less likely to go all the way through and end up in the morgue there than you are in other cities, all right? So I wanna make sure that they're using these key words and these key phrases to illustrate a thing, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best place for you to go to. The city and the police department has done an extraordinary job in addressing many of those issues, investigating those crimes, and holding people to account, and more importantly, working with our partner in the district attorney's office, Brooke Jenkins, in order to make sure there is accountability. So this is a setback because a lot of that hard work and the data. No, no, no. It's a setback because it was Ricky Pearsall, which is a first round draft pick rookie, superstar, possibly superstar rookie. That's not going to be able to participate. And it's costing the city a lot of money, a lot of visibility. And it also is painting a bad reputation for the city as though we weren't already familiar with it. It's just that the national media is starting to get a hold of it and it's making her look bad as a mayor. So you're going to see the mayor, the district attorney, the police captain, the police chief, the police, the police, police, police. You're going to see the deputy, the mayor. You're going to see everybody pop out all of a sudden because is building me a bad reputation and this is gonna come back to bite me when I decide that I wanna run for Congress or I decide that I wanna be a senator. I decide that I wanna be a governor. I decide that I wanna be the president of the United States of America. I decide that I wanna be a diversity, equity and inclusion pick for vice president of the United States of America. And then I could push out the, ex, the, the older person in order to make sure that I can then champion and celebrate the fact that, hey, I'm running for mayor, I'm running for president, I'm running for governor. I'm going to be the first black, this, that, this, and that, woman of color, whatever, blah, 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 blah. So they only popped out because they had to. Because too many people got their cell phones out and they over there documenting it and they telling y'all that it's bad out there and it's messing up the property values, it's messing up their reputation, and they have high aspirations. They're not just trying to be in that same position as they was because we historically know that mayors and district attorneys from San Francisco Kamala Harris, Gavin Newsom, they have higher expectations and greater political careers that they can leapfrog off of this smaller position to ultimately become greater as a result of it, all right? So make sure y'all keep y'all ears peeled to the streets. Anton is going to keep y'all informed on what's happening, even on a holiday. 